Did you know that the measles virus can cause a deadly inflammation of the brain? It's called subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, also known as SSPE. It is a progressive fatal brain disorder that affects mostly kids and young adults. And it all stems from a completely preventable source the measles virus. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 14-year-old boy who presented to his pediatrician with progressive behavioral changes over about two months. And over the past three weeks, he's been developing what's called myoclonus, or spontaneous jerking movements of his muscles. On neurological evaluation, the pediatrician knew something was wrong because he's been taking care of him his whole life, and he could tell that his behavior was off. And when he checked his reflexes, he was hyperreflexic. So with the hyperreflexia, the myoclonus, and the mental status decline, an MRI of his brain was performed. Specifically, what we see on the brain in a patient with SSPE is these patchy T2 signal changes in the white matter of the brain. They're usually periventricular or beside the ventricles in the brain, and they're in the subcortical white matter. Now he's a really healthy kid and has really had no significant past medical history, except whenever he was two years old, he did contract the measles virus, but recovered well. He contracted the virus because he was not vaccinated on schedule because typically the MMR vaccine is given at age 12 months to 15 months. So unfortunately, this child does have SSPE. So let's talk about what that is and how you treat it. It's a progressive inflammation in the brain secondary to a persistent infection with a mutated measles virus. Now it actually happens years after you contract measles. In fact, it happens anywhere from one to 15 years after the measles outbreak. It is a rare complication of measles, but unfortunately it is almost universally fatal. Children who have measles under the age of two are more likely to develop SSPE later in life. Now, usually when one gets infected with measles, your body will naturally clear the virus, but there are some mutant or wild strain forms of the measles virus, and these are the ones that lead to SSPE. This strain of the measles virus has impaired expression of something called the M protein. This altered M protein that's in the mutant strain of the virus allows it to maintain in the brain for a long period of time. So instead of your immune system fighting off the virus and clearing the virus, this mutated M protein allows the virus to stay in the brain and leads to chronic inflammation. And it typically happens in younger kids that get the measles because their immune system is immature when they contract the virus. And basically over time, the body's immune system is trying to fight it off, but it can't completely eradicate it. So it leads to chronic inflammation and progressive damage to the brain. How kids present with SSPE is very similar to how our patient presented. It starts with behavioral changes and progressive decline in school. It can lead to personality shifts and then will progress to myoclonus, which is where the body will spontaneously jerk certain muscles. This is a pretty classic presentation of SSPE. Stage three will progress into rigidity, spasticity, and they can even develop seizures and the last stage is stage four, which is typically a vegetative state followed by death. The entire course of SSPE can last from months to years, but it is almost always progressive. How do we make the diagnosis? First off, a patient can only develop SSPE if they had an actual infection with the measles virus. So in other words, if you've been vaccinated, you cannot develop this disease. And like I said earlier, it's usually children that have measles at an age before two. I mentioned that an MRI will show those periventricular white matter changes, and you can also obtain spinal fluid from a lumbar puncture and see that they will have elevated measles antibodies within the CSF. And you can also do serology of the blood and obtain IgG antibodies within the serum will also have high markers of measles IgG. And an EEG of the brain can also show a characteristic pattern of periodic high voltage and slow wave complexes every four to 12 seconds. So these findings, in addition to the clinical picture, will help you make the diagnosis. Unfortunately, there is no cure and the median survival is one to three years after the diagnosis. And although there have been some experimental treatments, for the most part, the care is supportive and trying to maintain a high quality of life for as long as possible. And here's the point that I wanna make with this video is that SSPE is completely 
preventable. And this is by the measles vaccine called the MMR, which is safe, effective, and highly available. It's usually given in two doses, one at age 12 to 15 months, and the second dose at age four to six years old. Please note that the measles virus is highly contagious and we have been seeing outbreaks in areas where there is low vaccination. Children that are not vaccinated for measles that contract the virus are not just at risk for the acute infection, but can develop this encephalitis years later, which can kill them. Remember, kids younger than 12 to 15 months can still get measles and we are protecting them through herd immunity by widespread vaccination. So if we have a low herd immunity where these people are not vaccinated and contract the virus, they can spread it to these little babies that can get the virus and not survive because of it. Not just in the short term, but in the long term. This is your reminder that measles is not just a benign childhood illness. It can be potentially fatal even years down the road. So the vaccine is not just about preventing rash and fever, it's about protecting the brain, the future, and the lives of vulnerable children. We must continue to advocate for strong science-based public health measures to keep SSPE in the history books where it belongs. You guys, I cannot stress to you how heartbreaking this condition is. And in our patient's case, he has continued to progress in his neurological decline despite all the supportive care that we've been able to give him. And unfortunately, he will pass away from this completely preventable disease. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.